Hey guys, welcome to the VFX vlog where you get to ask me filmmaking and visual effects related questions and I will try my best to answer them. In today's vlog I'm going to show you a really useful technique for Adobe After Effects and that is how to convert audio to keyframes so you can sync your animation to the volume of the audio. That is also the technique I use to animate the mouth on the puppet for my puppet tool tutorial and I will show you exactly how I did that. First off, just a quick announcement because there is going to be a small change and that is in all my previous VFX log I used to cover two separate topics but I decided to actually just keep it to one topic per VFX log because for one it makes it easier for you to find, it's easier to digest, you don't have to skip halfway through a vlog to you know watch the part that you're actually interested in but also it gives me a little bit more chance to talk a bit more in depth about one topic and show you a few more details in Adobe After Effects without dragging the vlog on a bit too much. But now for the topic of today's vlog. Converting audio to keyframes. In Adobe After Effects you can import an audio file, you can run a small tool over it and it will generate keyframes for the volume of the audio. What this enables you to do is you can use expressions to link effect properties or other elements to the volume of the audio and therefore they will be animated in sync with the volume of your audio. One of the things that I use this for is to animate the mouth on my puppet that I used in my puppet tutorial. You can check out the puppet tool tutorial right here if you want to learn how to create cool or creepy, depending on how you see it, puppet animation right in Adobe After Effects. Anyways, I used this technique to animate the mouth of the puppet because I didn't want to manually keyframe the mouth opening and closing in time with me talking. I just wanted to do all of that automatically and for that I simply imported the audio file that represented me talking, extracted the keyframes out of it and animated the visibility of the mouth to only show up when the volume was above a certain level. That gives the impression that my mouth is only opening when I'm actually talking. Of course there's a million other things that you can do with the keyframes once you've extracted them from your audio file but I will jump into After Effects now, show you how you can extract keyframes from audio and how you can link them up to for example animate the mouth of a puppet. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is actually the composition that I did use for my puppet tool tutorial and if you scrub through this you can see that my mouth animates. Um, let me zoom in a little bit just so you can see it a bit clearer, uh, maybe a bit too creepy so close up. So if I scrub through this you can see my mouth animates in sync with the audio and if you play this back you can indeed see my mouth animate but you cannot hear any audio and that is as I've mentioned a couple of times before After Effects does not play back audio by default. If you want to hear audio in After Effects you need to play it back using the RAM preview option. The RAM preview option sits in the preview panel just on the very right side there's a RAM preview button. Uh, you can probably not see the text because it's a little bit cut off but if you press that your composition will be played back with audio. Let's see if you can hear that. We will look at a very useful tool available to you in Adobe After Effects. It's called the Puppet Tool. So as you can see the mouth is synced with the audio. Now of course I did not animate that by hand and I want to show you step by step how to convert audio to keyframes and how to link it up for example with the mouth moving. For that I'm going to create a new composition. Uh, let's call this tutorial. 1920 by 1080 is fine, um, 30 seconds long is probably enough, let's hit OK. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in an audio file of the voice recording for the intro of the Puppet Tool tutorial. So I'm going to drag that in here. Um, playing back this will do nothing because it's an audio file. Again if you want to hear it you need to use the RAM preview button instead. But what you can do is you can actually expand this and under the audio tab you will actually find a waveform. So this one will show you the actual waveform of the audio. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see peaks and valleys here that indicate the volume of the audio. Now obviously with this alone you can't really do too much but you can convert this volume into keyframes and the way to do that is to select your audio file, go into your animation tool menu, go to the keyframe assistant and then click convert audio to keyframes. What this will do it will spit out a null object in your composition called audio amplitude and if you open up that layer you will see there's three slider effects applied to the layer. A left channel, right channel and a both channel slider. And again let me just move this over so you can see a little bit better what's going on. You can see a whole number of keyframes have been generated for all of those three slider effects and these keyframes represent the volume in your audio. So if you have a look here at the slider values, so for the left, right and both channel slider, as you scrub through the volume jumps up and down and 
if you expand the waveform, you can see that it's in sync with the volume of the audio. So for example, there's 0.6. If you go onto the spike here, it spikes up to 10.6 and goes back down and then jumps back up. So now you have keyframes representing the volume of the audio. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, now you can hook other properties up to these sliders using expressions. This is not going to get too complicated, but if you find yourself struggling with this, I do have a separate expressions tutorial that takes you through how to use expressions in Adobe After Effects from the very beginning. So do check that out if you feel you are getting lost. But let's start using this audio amplitude to animate the mouth on the puppet. So what I'm first going to do, I'm going to drag in the Tobias cutout that I used in my puppet tutorial into this clip. That's a little bit too big. Let's just scale it down a little bit. Yeah, about there will do. Maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, probably that will do. So the second piece of the puzzle is an image of a mouth that I have here. Basically, I just took another photo of me where my mouth was open and I just cut it out. So all I have here is really just the mouth part. So if I import this, you'll see it's just the mouth floating in outer space. Um, so what I want to do, first I want to position this mouth right over my closed mouth, just so that I can toggle between the two. It's kind of looking a bit creepy. So let's zoom that down a bit. Just make sure it fits as smoothly as possible over your closed mouth. Then if you disable and enable it, it kind of looks like you're opening and closing your mouth. Maybe I'll move this over to the left a little bit just so it sits exactly where my mouth opens and closes. Yep, that's actually not too bad. One thing you may notice, there's kind of a harsh edge around the mouth. Um, you can kind of clear that out with masks or what I like to do. So I like to apply a matte choker. So just apply that to the mouth. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the choke a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the softness just a little bit, just so that kind of the edges get blended out a little bit. Maybe the geometry softens up a little. Yep, that's actually quite nice. So, I mean, it's not 100% realistic, but, you know, the whole thing isn't really 100% realistic. It kind of looks a bit like something from South Park, which is kind of what I was going for anyways. So, now what we can do is we can hand animate this mouth to open and close about 100 times as I talk. But that kind of sucks. Let's not do that. Instead, let's use expressions to hook up the visibility of the mouth to the audio keyframes that we've generated. So basically what we can say, have the mouth only visible when this both slider value is above, let's say four, which only happens on the peaks of the audio. So in order to do that, what we want to do is we want to take the open image of the mouth, press T to over reveal the opacity. Make sure that you can also see your um, slider channel for both channels on your generated keyframes for the audio. And then we're going to alt click onto the stopwatch icon for the opacity of the mouth layer, which will open up the expression editor over on the right side. Make this a little bit bigger, just easier to see. And in here, we're going to type an expression that links the opacity of the mouth to the slider. So what we're going to do is clear whatever's in there and then take the pick whip icon and select the slider for both channels. So that will insert this piece of code into your expression. And the next thing we're going to do is that greater than four question mark 100 colon zero. Now this looks very cryptic. Basically, it's a little piece of code that basically says if the both channels slider value for the audio keyframes is greater than four, set the opacity of the mouth to 100. Otherwise, set it to zero. So if we click outside of the expression editor to apply the expression and now scrub through, you will see, let's zoom in again, you will see the mouth animate and it animates in sync with the audio. So every time the audio volume reaches above four, let me open up the waveform again, you will see the mouth being visible. Here, for example, it's down below, so you can't see the mouth open. In the spikes, it opens up. So that is a very simple way to kind of sync animations with the volume of the audio. And if we play this back now, obviously using RAM Preview. Very useful tool available to you in Adobe After Effects. It's called the Puppet Tool. Incidentally, it is very useful for of course, if you want the mouth to be visible more or less, you kind of tweak this value here, which determines the volume of audio that makes the mouth visible or that hides it. But you can do a lot of things with this. One quick thing, let me show you just an idea of something that you could do, for example. Let's create a new adjustment layer, call it bulge, and apply the bulge effect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the bulge center right in the center of my face, and I'm going to expand the horizontal radius and the vertical radius so that my head kind of looks really 
blown up like a balloon. The next thing I'm going to do is you can see here I've got the bulge height. And what I want to do is I want to link the bulge height to the volume of the audio. Before you ever try to link any properties up, make sure you actually expand them here down here in the layers window, just because otherwise you can't actually link anything up with a pick whip icon. So expand this to reveal the slider. Then go over to your bulge effect. Alt click onto the stopwatch icon next to the bulge height. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pick whip icon and I'm going to scroll down to my audio amplitude layer and I'm going to pick again both channels slider. I'm going to click outside of the window. Ooh, that, that's kind of a little bit over the top as you may see. Let's play this back and see what we actually get. A very exciting visual effects tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will look at now, obviously that is way too bulged up, way too distorted. So what we can do is you can simply go in here. This one obviously is the exact value of the audio amplitude at that level. Let's go to where there's a really high value. See, there's a 10 in here, for example. So what we can do is simply, where well, we've linked it up to the bulge height, maybe we'll divide it by 10, just so it's not so quite so dramatic. So it's just kind of a little bit blobberizing my head as I talk. And so if we now play that back, in visual effects tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will look at a very useful tool available to you in Adobe After Effects. So that way you kind of get my head bulging up and down in sync with the audio. And you can use this technique for linking up audio volumes to any effect properties that you want. You can create some really cool visualizations, some really, really funky effects. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to make your puppet head bulge, you know, unless you're really into that. But it was just an example to give you some ideas of all the cool things that you can do with converting audio to keyframes in Adobe After Effects. And that's really all there is to it. From this point onwards, it's really just up to your creativity of what you want to do with the keyframes. Once you've extracted them from the audio, you can hook them up to absolutely anything you want in your composition using expressions. You can create great music visualizations or, you know, just make small tasks a lot easier, like animating the mouth on the puppet would have taken me forever to do it by hand. So I decided to just use audio to keyframes and animate the mouth with that. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below and I will get around to answering them. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And, you know, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. Thank you.